Hi guys and welcome back. And today we get on with painting the Pershing tanks, or as affectionately known by the Haladonian tankers, the Dugite. So we get stuck straight into it and I started off firstly by doing just a black base undercoat with the Vallejo primer. You'll also notice that I took the decals off the original prototype tank and re base that with the black primer as well. I wanted them all to be starting from the same point. So the next coat was a, a bit of blue uh, darkened up with some of the black and uh, that is the underlying colour for all of the Haladonian vehicles moving forward. Then I came back in and hit it with a, um, some random spraying of the olive drab. And then over the top of that came in with some olive green. And finally came over the top of all of that with a, a unifying spray of German black brown. And look, while it's not very sophisticated, my main aim here was to keep it simple. So moving forward, you know, I'd be producing lots of vehicles like this. I wanted to have a camouflage scheme that I could easily replicate without having to think too much about it. So I know the colours, I know the random nature of it, and uh, hopefully that'll be reasonably consistent throughout all of the future vehicles that we build for the Haladonian Army. So as far as the detailed painting concerned, I did keep it really simple. Really, it was just the um, inside of the commander's uh, hatch, uh, which was a bit of duck egg and then came back with a bit of desert sand. And then the metal for the guns and just a few other bits and bobs around, a little bit of sort of simultaneously weathering with that as well. So nothing overly sophisticated. So onto the decals, and uh, after much trial and error in terms of getting the sizing right, so printing out a few just on plain paper and shrinking them and cutting them out and testing them for fit, finally got the dimensions right, and then transferred those onto the actual white-backed decal paper, because certainly my laser printer, and I think most domestic laser printers, can't print white on clear, so I had to get the white decal paper, which is a bit of a compromise, and you'll see when we look at it a little bit more closely, each one of them actually has a camouflaged background for the white bits that aren't taking up the shield and the dugout emblem in particular. So on the surface, then, just a matter of, well, you would think just a matter of cutting them out carefully, but as you'll see in a second, the um, dragging of, and that was a brand new blade, hadn't been used on anything else, 
but the dragging of the blade across the surface of the decals caused a bit of an issue around the cut edges. The decal paper behaved really well, so they really only needed to be immersed in the water for about 30 seconds, and, uh, and they came loose uh, very easily, but were very, very adhesive, so that, that was quite impressive. And of course, pre-applied setting solution and the softening solution, which I tend to randomly get around the wrong way, so I think you'll probably see me setting them with the softening solution in some instances and softening them with the setting solution. Didn't seem to harm anything, they all came out alright in the finish. So here you can clearly see the issue with the cut edges and it, it obviously just almost crumples off the colouring. It's zoomed in so it looks huge, but it's probably a, a, a couple of hairs width, uh, but it still it, it sticks out. So at this point I actually decided, well, I, I need to do something about that. So I came, I took this one back off and tried to use the blade in more of a, like a guillotine type action. I haven't got a guillotine, but I think I might need one. And that was better results, but, but not perfect, but it was certainly much better I could deal with what, uh, what the guillotine type action was giving me. So happily it was pretty much downhill skiing from this point onwards. Very easy to work with and I think they look pretty good so I'm overall quite happy with how this has gone. So three more to go and look I won't take you through the pain of watching me do all three of them. But uh, in general terms, I was really happy with the decal paper. So I think it's made by an Australian manufacturer. I'll um, put a picture up here so we can all have a look at it. It seemed to settle in very nicely and it printed quite nicely on the, on the laser printer that I've got here. So that was all good. Really keen to try and use the transparent background one, which works better for lighter backgrounds. Uh, and of course, can't print white on those. And probably will use those for the Haladonian Air Force, which will have a a far lighter camouflage scheme when I get around to doing that. So I used a combination of the blue Tamiya clear paint and the crystal clear canopy glue to mix together and form a sort of a paste and that was to go into the vision ports 
uh, to provide that sort of blue tinted glass effect. And the vision ports themselves are actually a part that's uh, normally supposed to be set up onto the back of the tank. I'm not quite sure what it is, to be honest, but I thought it just looked better on the front. So it sort of turns into a nice sort of pasty substance, which is fairly easy to control in terms of where you put it, and then just cleaned it up a little bit around the edges and, and came back later on and did the final cleanup, which was very little. So that worked as... Uh, I've done it before, so it worked as expected, uh, but yeah, pretty happy with the results. And then just a little bit more detailed painting around the, uh, the stowage that I added onto the back and the magazine for the 50 cal uh, and other little bits and bobs as I saw them. So the adaptive camouflage system went back over that with some dull gun metal, I think it was. And with the slightly shinier a variety of the uh, gun metal went through and just picked out a few hinges and locks and bits and bobs not all of them just just a few for uh, effect So the weathering was pretty simple, just used a very little amount of flat earth, heavily diluted with water, so it wasn't that strong in terms of pigment, and got that on and then moved it around and got it off where I needed to. And then while they were still a bit wet or damp, uh, got some European earth pigment and sort of dabbed that in mainly around the cracks. I didn't want it to get too far beyond that. A little bit at the front and somewhat at the back from mud throwing up. Put it on probably more liberally than I consciously wanted to, but uh, you, can always, uh, you can always take it off and lose a good effect. And so when it did dry, I was a little unhappy with both the amount of wash and the amount of pigment. So I took to it reasonably vigorously with a very soft toothbrush and 
was comfortable that I could because there weren't that many additional parts to the main hull. There were a little bit around the, um, the turret, and I was a bit more careful there. But uh, yeah, really just gave it a fair scrub and got got it to the point where I was happy with it. I wanted them to look like they'd been in action, reasonably recent action, cross-country, but also they'd been doing a few road miles to get to this next scene where they are now. So, yeah, looks looks good in person. It probably looks a little still a little too heavy here, but uh, in natural daylight, really, really happy with how that came out. And that is just me using the airbrush with just air to um, help dry and blow the surplus water away. And also can get you some nice little streaking effects as well, as long as you uh, don't linger in one spot too often. I didn't want too many of those, so I tended to blow most of it off. And then Lucky Last was just doing a very sort of casual once-over with some graphite pencils, sort of a couple of different tones in there. Uh, and again, just to sort of pick some rub edge. Again, one of the things I struggled with was the scale. So on 72nd, I had to keep reminding myself to bring it back and not going over the top. So again, pretty happy with that. The pencils are great, and you get that variation in tone and sheen uh, using a couple of different grades of graphite. And I may as well confess now, because the more astute of you will notice that when we do the final reveal and we and we whiz around for the 360 and a few of the close-up stills, I did the graphite pencil everywhere except, of course, on the uh, on the leading edges of the tracks. So I have uh, subsequently to producing this video, uh, gone back in and fixed that up. And that's pretty much it. So we'll do the uh, traditional uh, whiz around on the turntable a couple of times at different angles and then a few still pictures to hopefully pick up some of the detail. And you might notice, if you haven't already noticed, you might notice a few familiar names there for the first Haladonian armoured squad uh, under the command of, well, you'll, you'll see who 011 is.
And so that's pretty much it, guys. Really fun little project to do. There's something very satisfying about seeing four of the same thing all together. Uh, when we typically, I guess, at the 135th scale, you, you very rarely would do four of the same tank and have it in a, in a diorama. So that was fun, and it was good fun just exploring uh, the use of the new decal paper and uh, uh, how all that came together. So we'll be back, hopefully, in the not-too-distant future with the final reveal of everything in place on the Dio base. And uh, I've got a bit of a, a plan there to do something slightly different. So hopefully that comes off and uh, it works out okay. And then after that, there will be, that's normally it for the, the my builds anyway. But in this instance, there will be a um, special feature after the final reveal, which hopefully you will find interesting. So as always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you uh, taking time out of your busy lives to uh, watch my ramblings. Like if you liked, sub if you're not already, so you uh, don't miss out on any of the new updates. And as always, really look forward to the comments and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Bye.